tonight's FDA mounts a spirited defense of a decision to grant Lamens Africa Company an extension of the shelf life for rice distributed to senior high schools, dismissing claims that the product was unwholesome. When the producer applied for the extension, which is internationally accepted, we looked at the quality of the product. And so those three laboratory tests tell us that the product qualities can still be used. The product can be used based on the qualities that have been tested in the three laboratories. And based on that, the uh, best before date was extended to April, not to December as the manufacturer requested. <laughs> We'll hear from the Assurance Committee, which is gearing up to launch an investigation into the issue, insisting some schools received the food even after the new shelf life of the rice had expired. This is a company that should have been blacklisted. That should, because they were caught on the blind side of the FDA rebagging. From the checks I have done from a number of schools, there are some of the schools that continue to serve this food even into uh, June, July, from the checks I have done. Yeah, definitely, we will. Definitely, we will. We have discussed it at uh, the level of leadership of the committee, and we are going to take it up. We speak to experts and people who have a lot of answers to give on this particular issue here on Top Story, brought to you always by Telesel, connecting energies and holding synthesized prey and coil. Enjoy a holy sleep. My name is Samuel Kojo Brace. Well, tonight, uh, Food and Drugs Authority is justifying its controversial decision to grant Lamens Africa Company an extension of the shelf life for rice distributed to senior high schools, dismissing claims that the product was unwholesome. The controversy, which has drawn attention from the Assurance Committee in Parliament, stems from allegations that 15,000 bags of rice were repackaged past their best before dates and distributed through the Free Sinai School Secretariat in February. Samuel Okujuta Blacko, who blew the whistle on the issue, insists the rice posed a health risk to consumers. However, the FDA asserts that the shelf life extension was based on due diligence, adhering to international standards, and that the rice was deemed safe for consumption. Now, FDA's director of legal, Joseph Yao Benia, uh, clarified that uh, the 100,000 city fine imposed on Lamens Africa Limited was due to unauthorized rebagging of rice, not its quality. He spoke to my colleague, MFR Power, earlier on the media news. As an institution, regulated institution, was not for any reason jeopardize the health and safety of anybody in this country, especially children and students and school children for that matter. FDA will not shy away from handling unsafe products the way it should be handled. We have done this severally. Products, rice consignment coming from outside this country, we've dealt with them severally when they are not in good condition. We've destroyed them. Not too long ago, FDA we reported an incident in one of the northern regions in this country. A school was serving uh, products that were not fit for human consumption. We dealt with it. We stopped them from doing that. So FDA will not shy away from dealing with non-conforming products. As an institution, as a regulator, with international refuge, we will not do anything to jeopardize the health and safety of anybody in this country. Like I said, we have this information. So FDA went in with the police and realized that in a certain facility, on license and unknown to the FDA, someone was rebagging rice. The first thing to do was to stop that process. So what we did was, like the uh, information that was just put out, we sanctioned them on three points. One, the facility is not licensed for rebagging of rice. Two, the FDA has not given permission for that activity to be conducted. And thirdly, that process was not supervised. So FDA is that based on this, the rice, the date on the rice as was seen on that day shows that the best before date had expired. So what do you do? The first action to take is that we recommend that the product should be safely disposed of. The first time FDA got onto this product, the best before date, as, that was in December. And the best before date was that December 2023. And we are saying that they were rebacking the product without FDA's approval to do that. Is that not criminal? Is that not criminal? That is, that is why they were sanctioned. That is why they were sanctioned to pay the administrative fine. It is the rebacking without FDA's approval. That is the reason why they were sanctioned. They were fined for what? 
fine for rebagging without permission, fine for rebagging in an unlicensed premises, fine for rebagging without FDA supervision. It has nothing to do with the rights at that point. Well, Joseph Yaobini also clarified that the shelf life extension adhered to international standards and was granted following due diligence. I've given you two dates. I'm saying that expiring dates means that the product safety is no longer guaranteed after that date. Mm-hmm. When you have a best before date, there are two issues. The issue of safety is not said that it is no longer safe after that. What is not good at that time is whether the qualities of the product can still be allowed. Quality in terms of taste, color, texture, etc. That is the reason why the, when the producer applied for the extension of uh, the best before date, it has to be looked at. So three things were done. The laboratories that were accredited were allowed to do this test. One in India, one in Ghana, Center for Scientific Research, uh, the CSIR, the Food Research did it, and they did a confirmatory test. When the producer applied for the extension, which is internationally accepted, we looked at the qualities of the products. And so those three laboratory tests tell us that the product's qualities can still be used. The product can be used based on the qualities that have been tested in the three laboratories. And based on that, the uh, best before date was extended to April, not to December as the manufacturer requested. By, by how many months? By how many months did they extend it? From December to April. Mm. But not to the December 2024 when the what uh, the man, uh, producer requested for, and it was still so safe, and it, it was still safe. Mm. Up to December 2024, mm-hmm. we need to produce further evidence on that. We can, based on the report that we had from the train labs, can extend the product best before date to April, and that is exactly what they did. And it, it was still safe in terms of the taste, it the color, and quality safe. that you talk about. It was still safe. The issue I said was the quality. Please, they applied for extension of the best report date and the processes, we took them through the processes. And once they qualified to have the date extended, we did that. There are two different issues. They were doing something at a facility that is not licensed. They were doing something that was not being supervised by FDA. They were doing something that FDA has not approved. When they applied for the extension, we took them through the process, and when we were satisfied, based on international best practices, we gave them the extension up to April. We did not agree to the December extension because we requested for further information. Oh, Joseph Yaobini is the FDA's director of legal. Now, we've also been hearing from the board of the Buffer Stock Company. Harry Nana Boache uh, is uh, the chair of that particular board, and he says no wrong or cared. I think that the Ministry of Education has just rubbished this. I mean, just yesterday we saw it on the front page. They've rubbished it. I mean, this is mere, baseless, frivolous allegations. It is not true. Uh, we, have, we have never fed any single student with any unwholesome uh, meal. So um, I think that the story is even dead on arrival. I mean, we know Kujetua Black Power with negatively sensational, you know, uh, publications all the time. So, I mean, I think that one is um, already <laughs> gone. Now, uh, Nana Komia, who is a member of the governing New Patriotic Party, uh, speaking on the Super Morning Show, emphasized that numerous unanswered questions remain regarding the rice scandal, calling for transparency and accountability from all parties involved. I am interested in what the public is interested in. One, was there contaminated food? That's the primary. Was the food that was fed contaminated? even though we hadn't heard of any adverse report and so on. But was it expired? If it was, how come it was still fed to the school? Who are those people above who gave the orders? Unfortunately, Parliament is uh, not sitting. I would have liked anything where a parliamentary committee like uh, Samuel Kujato's committee, the Assurances Committee, would summon all of these officials and hold a public inquiry. Uh, some of these headmasters, some of these matrons, the laments, uh, importer, the Food and Drugs Authority, if short of a par- proper parliamentary inquiry, all of these people should have a proper media response. Um, and I do agree with um, the Chief of Staff that this is propaganda. The Chief of Staff is a very respected woman, and the office she holds is a very 
important. So I don't, Im I cannot imagine that she will make a statement when she doesn't have the facts. So, so you agree with her? I don't agree. I don't disagree with the chief of staff. I don't agree. I don't disagree with Samuel Pujato. I'm saying that there has to be, it should not be left to what A is saying or B is saying. It has to be a proper inquiry. So you had uh, Nana Akomedia who is calling for transparency in this particular uh, matter. This is Top Story. The chairman of the Assurance Committee, Samuel Okujitra Blackwa, joins via phone. I'm grateful to you, sir, for joining. Now, contrary to what you earlier told us, that the best uh, before date was extended to December 2024, the FDA is telling us they only approved the shelf life extension for four months, which ended in April 2024. Where did you get that information from? I've never said anywhere that there was an extension to December 2024. I, I never said that. You can go through the original publication. I've, I've never said that. Uh, so please um, uh, do your checks properly. Okay. Uh, first of all, let me emphasize that the FDA response, though belated, exposes the chief of staff and the chair of the buffer stock company, whose voice you played earlier. They have sought to create the impression that all of what I have put out is untrue, is baseless propaganda. You have had the FDA mm -hmm. uh, a lawyer confirm everything I put out, that indeed the National Food Buffer Stock Company and laments the importer engaged in criminal conduct. They, without authorization of the FDA, on the FDA's blind side, in flagrant violation of Act 851 and LI 1541, under the cover of darkness and risking the lives of millions of senior high school students, they decided to reback rice which had gone beyond its best before date. And you have had the FDA confirm what I put out that laments admitted culpability and has been fined. Now, what the FDA has not put out is that the original roadmap for dealing with this matter containing internal memos which I have secured from the FDA is not what they eventually implemented. What the FDA set out to do on the 29th of December was one, to make sure that the rebargain is stopped promptly because at the time of the tip-off, 15,000 bags mm -hmm. had been rebagged mm -hmm. into the ECOWAS bags, and the origin had been changed, remember, from uh, India to made in Ghana, which is already, uh, uh, we all agree, a violation of Act 851 and a criminal conduct. Then, the second thing they were to do, according to their roadmap, was to dispose of the rice totally destroyed the rice. Then thirdly, they were to find laments 150,000 Ghana cities. What the FDA must be telling Ghanaians this evening is why they did not follow their original roadmap. Who were those powers that influenced the FDA to change course? So we saw that suddenly the fine was reduced from 150,000 to 100,000. The company has paid only half and has gotten away with it. Then too, the rice never got destroyed. And what we now know is that all the 22,000 bags of rice have been distributed. The other matters which have not been responded to by the FDA is why has the National Food Buffer Stock Company gotten away with its reckless irresponsible conduct but, 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 as we speak as mm, we speak mm -hmm. only laments mm -hmm. has been fined remember that laments did not carry out this criminal rebagging in 
some hidden place or in Lamense's uh, 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 warehouse or company. Mm -hmm. It was done at a storage facility by the National Food Buffer Stock Company, where Abdul Wahab, a CEO, and Nana Bwachi, is board chair. Mm -hmm. They conspired with Lamense to use their premises. Why has the National Food Buffer Stock Company not been sanctioned? When Act 851 says that, you cannot run a food storage facility without licensing. It has not been licensed. It has not been registered. And so far, NAFCO has gotten away. All the officials there are at post. Well, they, well, have well, not, they have not been well, sanctioned. Well, well they, then, they, then they, the they, they, but, but, please but, allow me. Please I'll, allow me. I'll, 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 let, I'll, let, I'll let you learn. But the recommendation the FDA itself gave that was that it is strongly recommended that the operators of all such storage facilities across the country take immediate steps towards licensing their facilities as per the provisions of Section 130 of the Public Health Act 2012. Supervisors of, uh, and all relevant staff operating at the Ford Buffer Stock Facility should undergo training in good storage and distribution practices. And the rice may be disposed of at the end of the original shelf life. So, I mean, they didn't recommend that those facilities should be closed down. Shocking because when you read Act 851, it is clear that it is an offense to operate a food storage facility, and there are clear sanctions. It doesn't say you should just recommend some future reforms. That's not what the law says. So, why did the National Food Buffer Stock Company get off the hook? That has to be addressed by the FDA. I mean, the litany of the election of collusion in this matter. Which, 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 which brings down the, 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 the hitherto highly respected image of the FDA in this matter is most worrying. Now, the FDA has also not responded to other fundamental issues. One, why is it that this company, which was already indicted by the Auditor General in 2021, now you have caught them red-handed engaged in this criminality on the 20th of December, 2023, why did you then entertain further applications from them? You, 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 were, you were compelled to put aside your own roadmap, which was to destroy the rice, make sure you impose heavy sanctions on this company. Suddenly, you cozy up to this company. Mm. You, you tell them to bring applications. Then you say that you've done an extension uh, to April. Now, the FDA should tell us, are they the ones who authorize laments to re-back in ECOWAS, a fraudulent description. Well, that that, 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 back, that they, they have are said. They the ones, are they the ones? That, is the FDA saying that it, it, it allowed laments to change the origin from India to Ghana? Well, is the FDA saying it allowed they, laments they are, not they are, to... They are concerned, not to, not they are to, they are concerned, they are concerned Sami, is about whether it was wholesome or unwholesome. They have concluded and they have re-emphasized that point today that the, that the, the rice was wholesome for the people to eat. Does that not bring a conclusion to the matter? It doesn't. I take this FDA claim of wholesomeness with a pinch of salt because I have evidence which I have published dated the 6th of February, the examination results from the FDA. We stated categorically that the rice was not wholesome, that the rice had high insect infestation and has high fat acidity, and that it was not wholesome. Data 6 February 2024. That's, that's an so, FDA. Uh, so, can, can you share that report with me so I can also, uh, you know, yes, be conversant with this? I will. So then I will. we can I will all be on the same you. level. And, and if you talk to your colleague, MFR Power, I've shared it, I've shared it with her and a number of people, Kojo, Yangsin, uh, Winston, and some of your colleagues have it, mm. including the, the guys at, at TV, Benjamin Akaku and the rest. I've shared it with them. So And I've published this on my social media portals. You will see that the FDA 6 February examination results does not confirm what they are telling us today. It talks about high insect infestation and high fat acidity, which medical doctors who have assessed the FDA report say that this rice should not have been consumed. So look, I agree with Nana Komia, mm. and that is what I've been calling for all along, that let's have an independent inquiry into this matter. The FDA is complicit. They have questions to answer. Look, the, the, the top officials at FDA must be fired. Do you think that if it's me, caught, engaging in criminality, rebagging, changing the origin, and then sending this food to the schools without an expiry date, even this so-called extension, why didn't they state it on the rebag rights that it is approved to, this, to, to April 2024? 
so mm. that the headmasters, the matrons will know. Now, as we speak, we all know that this food, when it gets to the schools, is not consumed in a day or in a week or in a month. Uh, they have vacations, they come back and continue eating this food. I mean, I have evidence talking to the heads that some of this rice was consumed way after May, after June. <laughs> you know, so, so you have an institution that is complicit. They didn't make sure that the rice was destroyed. They didn't stand by their original FDA examination results. They were arm-twisted to change the results to allow this company, which appears untouchable, you know, to even just pay partly its fine. And, and they were not prosecuted, as the law requires. There's, there's been no deterrence. I mean, so anybody can engage in criminality who sells food. We don't care about public health and safety. And then the company can then turn around, re-back in a fraudulent manner. Okay. ECOWAS, where does ECOWAS come in in this matter? S S why do they use ECOWAS back? Mm. And then they say that uh, it's been extended. Yeah. The heads do not know. And the heads is we've gone beyond April, and this rice has been served to our children. Okay. And the FDA is, is here making excuses, passing the back. Some yes. Be sanctions. Mm. People must be prosecuted in this matter. I get it. Do, do stay with me. Uh, let me bring in Charles, uh, because since this issue broke, Charles has launched a preliminary probe into the matter. Uh, we want to find out what's the latest uh, in this particular investigation. And uh, uh, I have with me Primoz Barrow, who is National Secretary of Charles. I'm grateful to you, uh, Mr. Barrow, for joining here. What is the finding of your investigation that uh, you, you launched since this issue broke out? Well, um, good evening to you and your listeners. Um, um, let me just make a little bit of correction. Um, I think the first time that we were engaged, uh, I'm talking about Charles, uh, through your media, that was the first day Honorable Ablakwa, you know, um, you know, raised the issues and they started uh, gaining grounds in the airwaves. When we were initially contacted, indeed, I remember when uh, I was contacted to speak on behalf of Charles, I, was, I, I made it clear that that was the very first day that I heard the story. And that uh, at that day, I was on the line with uh, Mr. Kwasing, the PRO for the ministry. And it was there, uh, he made a point. He made a point initially that um, they were also hearing it and they were also going to investigate to it. On and on, um, we've all heard about the outcome of the investigations. In fact, what I said that day was that I did not say Charles was going to do a preliminary investigation or an independent investigation. What I said was that we're also happy that the ministry, who we are directly under, are going to conduct that investigation. And I indicated that we just hope that um, the issue turns out not to be true. Because well, it's well, a You told me, uh, uh, you told myself on television that... You had even put a statement on your platform. Yes, I'm, coming, I'm coming to that, yes. Okay. So I'm just saying that, mm -hmm. it's, you know, when you say somebody's going to do an investigation, okay. uh, what I said ideally was that we had sent out the information mm -hmm. to our members okay. on our platform, that is our regional representatives, mm -hmm. that uh, if there's any case of any school that has consumed that rice or they still have evidence of such uh, rice, they should let us know. Unfortunately, as I speak to you, again, we've not had any official complaint from any region. Okay. And I'm so sad because uh, this is rice that has already been consumed, if I am right. Mm. Um, the luck has been that, for now, nothing has been reported. Nothing on it has been reported. We can only say, what I can tell you that as Charles is that uh, those who have the facts, those who have the facts, like Honorable Ablakwa has indicated, and the FDA, the reports are there. The powers that be and those who are the influence and the facts should bring out the issues because it's, it's worrying. But on the part of Charles, like I indicated, officially, and that's a challenge we also have, we have not received any official complaint from any of our heads. I am not doubting the fact that Honorable Ablakwa has engaged some of them. Yes, these things happen. For one reason or the other, people may decide to complain to uh, people in high places who can speak on their for, for them. They can complain to even journalists. But to complain to us formally as Charles, surprisingly, um, we've not had any, uh, you know, uh, uh, such feedback as I speak. And I can speak authoritatively to that. I think okay. that's what I can say on this. Okay. All right. I'm grateful yes. to you for, for joining yes. us here. Uh, let, me, br let me bring in Maxwell Danso, who is a food agric engineer consultant. Uh, Maxwell, grateful for joining. Uh, I mean, what's the difference between best before and expiry? Thank you very much um, uh, for this opportunity. So um, when we talk about best before and aspiring, um, normally with best before, it indicates that the food um, is having a date which uh, will retain
protein is optimal quality, okay, such as taste, texture, and nutritional value. And when it comes to it just means that after that date, the food is no longer considered safe to eat. And normally, uh, for expiring dates, it's, it's attached or found on perishable items like dairy meat, um, uh, milk, and other stuff. But best before is normally used for um, mostly found on greens like rice, maize, and the likes. Uh, so, I mean, what, what, can we extend these dates, uh, especially best before? As for, as for expiry, I'm not sure you can extend it, but can we extend the best before date? Yes, it's, it's possible uh, to extend it, especially when, you know, it's in um, a safe place, kept safe and of a good quality. It can be, it can be extended, yes. And when it comes to greens, um, before you extend the, the best before date of greens, you need to check some few things to make sure that uh, this green is, is wholesome or is good for consumer uh, to, to, to take. And some of the things you have to look at is insect contamination. That's weevils or mites, uh, mold growth or moisture contamination. Uh, some grains also have more like a, a evidence of uh, increase in fatty uh, or oily content in it, which makes it go rancid over time. So these are some of the things that you have to look at, apart from the other um, more chemical situations like uh, it being exposed to uh, toxins, uh, like mycotoxins, which cause more health issues over time. Yeah. So at what point in time can we say a rice product is wholesome or unwholesome? If you can add it to how long can you then extend a best before date? And then you look at at what point can you say this rice product is wholesome or unwholesome? So, thank you very much. So, for, for you to say a rice is wholesome, then it means that all these uh, things that I've mentioned for you to look at before extending the date need not to be there. You shouldn't find insects in it. You shouldn't find any mold growth in it. Uh, some of these things can just be seen by just looking at it. It shouldn't be powdery because once insects eat it, they tend to... Um, a feed on it, you have some. It's some of the greens become powdery, and it's not. It's not good. It's not good for consumption. Yeah, and they can lead to food poisoning and other uh, health, you know, um, issues over time. Yeah. So, so let me ask this: If the FDA says at one point that mm. the rice does not conform to the GSA standards, can it mm. then, after a laboratory test, come out to say? It was wholesome. Can that can that happen? Um, is it the same sample that they used or different sample? That's a question. And normally in testing, you iterate it. You you make sure that you've tested. You know uh, the samples. You don't just take one sample. You don't just take one bag of rice or you know, a, a certain stipulated sample and then just test and gen make a generalization. We all, we, most of us did uh, the basic uh, research methods in how you take samples so that you have uh, an adequate, you know, um, research findings for the study that you are making. Otherwise, when you just take one thing, it will not, uh, it can't stand for all. So uh, depending on the number of samples that were looked at, then, uh, it would really ascertain that, okay, uh, this is wholesome and this is not wholesome. But what it came up then, suddenly uh, there was a change is, is, is can, can really okay. you know, raise questions. Mm. Okay. That, okay, I have uh, this to be wholesome and then later I come and say, oh, it's not wholesome. Okay. It can raise a lot of questions. Yeah. Maxwell, I'm grateful to you. Uh, Samir yeah. Kujoto, so uh, will, is the assurance committee taking this matter up? When can we expect that to start? And uh, we are going to uh, start looking into this uh, in the next uh, few days. Look, we paid laments millions of Ghana cities. We should not be, they are not doing us a favor. We should not be talking about uh, uh, extension, 
uh, it's just low quality. When other countries, you saw Michelle Obama's initiative, making sure there's high nutrition, which has a bearing on IQs for American school children. This is a global competitive era. Our children are going to compete with children in those countries. And we are here, we are talking about a state. What's so special about laments? Why is it that other companies will be sanctioned, their items will be destroyed, they will be prosecuted, and laments gets away, and we are here, we are being told, our children, all these officials who are doing this, if their children were in senior high school, would they allow their children to eat this kind of rice? Rice that has insect infestation, that has high fat acidity. And we are here debating, oh, best before, uh, expiry, it's just low quality, it's just reduction in nutrition, it, 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 the insects were probably not that much. I mean, when we, we gave them a single source contract, a sweetheart deal, we are paying them millions of dollars in taxpayer funds. And this is what we get. And they've gotten away with their criminal conduct. Look, I assure the people of this country, these guys, for their callousness, their heartlessness, just because a few unscrupulous elements want to make money, they will not get away with this. Well, uh, so, so, I mean, the expectation we should have is that the assurance committee, obviously, is going to take this matter up. But what will be the scope of, of the investigations if the assurance committee takes met this matter up? We will have public hearings. You do know that our hearings are, are public. Uh, clearly, the National Food Buffer Stock Company has questions to answer why it has not up to date as we speak. Uh, licensed history facilities, why it is jeopardizing the health of uh, our students they have serious questions to answer then the fda why are we seeing all of these conflicting test results uh 6 february the rice is not wholesome it has high in insect infestation high fat acidity then uh suddenly there are new test results that it is safe it's wholesome i mean and then uh, uh they give a special dispensation to laments which other food suppliers do not have I mean, they, they go after other food suppliers, destroy their, uh, their, their products, sanction them, blacklist them. But Laments is untouchable. Laments has not even paid all the fine. The, the fine for Laments was even reduced, a slap on the wrist, an insult to all of us. So the FDA itself is complicit, and they will have questions to answer. Certainly the Ministry of Education, the Ministry of Education was informed about this as far back in January. Reverend John Tim Fojo, who is feigning ignorance. He and the ministry, Dr. Yarosei Duchum, who all knew about this and could have taken steps to stop this rise from entering our schools okay. to protect our kids placed under their care. Mm. The free SHS secretariat, they all have questions. And then Charles, the heads of our secondary schools, mm. they must tell us, why are they accepting food that does not have expiry dates? Mm. Why did they accept this rebound rice, ECOWAS made in Ghana, no expiry date? And, and and some of them tell me they were afraid. Why are you afraid? Why can't you stand up to criminals? Okay. So people have questions to answer. I'm grateful to you, Sami Okujuto, for uh, your time here on the top story. Now, uh, uh, we would uh, move to the Joy News studio because today we're having a very important debate, uh, the manifesto debate on wash and climate change. You know how important climate change and wash have become uh, to our, our livelihood. So today we're having that in uh, particular interaction uh, on the Joy News channel. We are hosting uh, Dr. Henry Kwabena uh, Kokofu Esquire. is a member member of the MPP's manifesto team, Professor Nana Ama Brown Kluche. He is also a member, uh, she is also a member of the NDC's Natural Resources Mining Science Committee, and uh, they are being hosted by Benjamin Akapo. We'll be uh, joining them right after these. There's a business in every